everybody, it's Doug here, Doug Mystic Eye on Board Game Geek, bringing you another playthrough of a uh, game that's been out for a long time but has had m recent Kickstarter expansions become available, and that is Zombie Side. We're going to be playing something from Season 3, sort of, yes, uh, and Season 1, which is going to be the, the uh, uh, expansion of Angry Neighbors. And within that, we are going to have a bunch of new rules, and I'm going to touch on each one of those in turn um, and just show you what we're going to be playing with in this episode. I'll probably do one turn just to get us kicked off. And I'm still debating, uh, as I work through this, I'm still debating if I'm going to add companion dogs and zombie dogs into it because I already got a lot of added to it, and I don't want it to become too muddy. But if I take my turns carefully, it should be okay. But let's uh, start with the characters. Now, one thing that's interesting is the new... Um, Within the new expansion, uh, they have a big giant deck, something I got, which I think is awesome, is a big giant deck of all the characters in the game, and you can just deal these out and end up with six random heroes. Now, obviously not everybody's going to have all these, so you just filter out the ones you don't have and use the ones you do. Now, we ended up with uh, six guys, but I did take two specifically from... I dealt out two specifically from Angry Neighbors, so we had a couple of Angry Neighbor characters, and those are going to be... Adam and Julian, and that's going to be those two. Now let's let me go show you the the cards for the others, and uh, see what we're going to be playing today. So first up, uh, we got Wanda here, an old standby from season one. She got randomly dealt into the game, and she's going to start her her in her world with a frying pan. That's not the greatest thing in the world, but she's uh, our first character. Then we got a, a character I, I don't remember where he came from. He's an expansion box character, Fred. Um, who uh, basically likes a, crick, a bloody cricket bat? Um, I, I could go over. Do you, I don't know if you want me to go over their their character skills as we play or in the introduction. I think I'll just do it as we play, so we can get started on play faster. I will point out one thing that his Reaper combat is very good. So I'm going to want to get him a good uh, weapon pretty quickly, so that comes into effect. Reaper combat allows him to when he kills a zombie. Let's say he kills a, a walk standard walker, he can kill another standard walker. Uh, one standard walker extra for that kill. Uh, he can also do that with fatties and anything else he can kill. So if he can kill one fatty, then if there's another fatty there that's next on the priority list, he can kill, or it doesn't matter. If he kills the fatty, he can kill a second one, too. Pretty good. Anyway, next up, we have Adam. He's from the Angry Neighbors expansion specifically. You see that he has a one die to his melee attacks to start with, so I gave him a fire axe. Um, he gets a uh, Combat die later in webbing, which is pretty cool. It means you can you can use all the all the items in your inventory. So he's going to become laden with weapons later on. Then another expansion character. And this is one of the reasons I'm thinking about adding the dog companions in. Because if we get that far, and based on the scenario I'm saying, I think we will. Um, she's got a free move action, but as you see later on, when she hits the red, the uh, orange level, she can take one free dog action. That'd be cool. Uh, because uh, companions and angry neighbors, and you'll see what companions are, and the dogs, they take up the actions of the characters in lieu of the character taking actions. So they have great benefits, but they're not always the most beneficial thing to have. And then we have, I think that's Th Thaisa? I don't know, Tessa? I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to call her Tessa just because it's easier to say. <laughs> uh, let me know if somebody knows exactly how to pronounce her name. But that's our other character, again, randomly drawn. So she was another expansion character. Um, not from this expansion, but from something else. I think maybe Season 2 Kickstarter or Season 1. I don't even remember. Uh, but she's got, a, she's got a free search action. That's pretty good. And then last on our group is going to be Julian, uh, who's got Steady Hand as his starting action. That's really good. So I gave him the pistol. Um, so that uh, he had a he could pick his targets out of a crowd even if there's no other players there that's a very effective skill um, and then I did mention on cat the reason I gave cat up here the crowbar is because she uh, gets a, that extra move action so she'll be able to get the doors quickly and get them open as we um, uh, go through the scenario so that's the characters now when I get to playing the game I'm definitely going to put the camera back on the stand but there's so much stuff I just thought I'd free form it for now and now I'm going to talk about the decks of cards, and we may be adding a couple decks of cards here, I'm not sure. Uh, but right here uh, is the uh, Seeker Zombies, those are from the, uh, the new expansion, and their ability is, is that when, if there's already Seeker Zombies on the board, when you draw a new card, the Seeker Zombies that are already out there get to activate once before the, the, uh, you populate the new zombies, so they get an extra activation when these cards are drawn. 
Then of course we have the base game ones from this is from season one, which we'll be using because we picked a scenario, or I did rather, that uh, uses the Angry Neighbors expansion and season one. I could have done there's ones with season two, there's ones with season three, but the, I picked one with season one just to mix it up, and I kind of like the idea of the scenario and the map's not quite as large. Um, then we got the items from season from sorry not from season three but from uh, uh, Angry Neighbors. You know the one thing I wish uh, it was easier to tell was what set these items came from so you could separate them easily again. Uh, on the fronts, not on the backs, but just something on the front to designate what it came from. Just like they do with the walker cards. You see they've got the big seeker symbol there. It makes it easy to discern, but not the weapons. Um, then we have the companions. Now this is something new. You notice that they have passive abilities. If they're attached to somebody, they also have some active abilities, but mainly passive. And these are there's several different types. I'm going to save that as a bit of a surprise for the game as we go. And then we got these guys here. These are uh, the uh, VIP, very infected people, uh, zombies. They don't do anything special, but when they're mixed in, if you can get collect sets, you get a bonus from them, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can pull out certain weapons out of the decks and everything uh, because you killed enough of these v VIPs. Um, you have to have one of each type, I guess, and there's several types of one, I think four types. So if you can collect a full set, yourself, not not uh, amongst the players, but as a character, then you get a bonus. Otherwise, they're just kind of cool-looking different miniatures that will appear on the board. Um, and we got, again, some additional extra I action or items that came with the, some of this extra stuff. I'm going to mix them in just for the fun of it. Again, I can't determine who, what they are, so when I separate them out, I just got to try and remember what's in Season 1 and what's not. Um, and then even then, what's in Angry Neighbors and what's in the expansions. It's going to be tough. And then... Um, then we got this little deck here. These are the Feast of Crows or Murder of Crows. Uh, the box is called, the, or they, they came as Feast of Crows. And um, now, see, these are numbered, so these are a little easier. So are the, some of the, see, the, the zombie cards are all numbered and separated. They're so easy to figure out. But anyway, we're going to have those in there as well. And then we're going to have the dice, uh, these other extra items here that are from uh, one of the expansions. They got some interesting things in them, like these golden AK-47s. They're not ultra red, red weapons. They're not really any better. They're just cool looking. Um, so um, they, they might be a little better than some of the standard weapons, but not that much. And then we have the standard deck from Season 1 that we'll be mixing everything in with. So those are the decks we're currently using, and of course you got all the wound cards. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to pull in the the Lost Zombivores, the um, zombie dogs and the zombie and the dog companions. I'm still thinking about that. If I do, I'll make sure I note it as we start playing. Now, talking about our scenario here, we have a, a good one. Uh, basically, uh, let me get out the scenario book and I'll start talking about it. And I'm going to put the scenario up on screen for you here. Okay, so we're going to be playing M Mission MO3. It says it's an easy mission. It probably is. It's for six plus survivors. It takes 90 minutes. I picked this one mainly because I'm going to be managing a lot of stuff. And I'm going to make it more difficult by adding these some of these other things in, like the, the Feast of Crows. They're, those Murders of Crows are pretty tough. They move through. They're like the zombie dogs. They move three, and they avoid all obstacles. They can go right over stuff. It's pretty pretty neat. At least that's what I read. I, I don't I haven't. I can't find the official rules. I got nothing in the box, so I kind of poked around online to find that. But again, back to our scenario. It's called the Dramatic Res Rescue. A pair of kids from the next district just came for help. Their parents and friends went on a raid for weapons got separated, and are now stuck in the middle of a zombie meeting. That's a, a joke, actually, right? <laughs> Things may soon get nasty if we don't lend an armed hand, and I couldn't stand the, I couldn't stand tears on those little faces. Today, we are the heroes. That's pretty cool. So, um, the objective is save them. Be a hero. You win the game when all the companions have been taken alive, and I'll show you where the companions are on the board, but you can see them also on the map on the... On the X's, it says special rules, saving private. Ro no, we just we save everybody. Place a gunman, a handyman, a searcher, and a sniper companion miniature in the indicated space. Um, you can kind of see them at the top of the screen right here. Uh, also, here's a picture of those guys in their barricaded little room um, that you can look at. That we have to save them uh, as well. And then also, uh, when, when that door opens, we don't spawn zombies in their space. Um, and then it says they can be taken in the same way as a companion token. Each companion token and revealed companion gives five experience points to the survivor who takes it. That's pretty cool. I have the magic key. 
put the blue objective randomly among the objectives. We've done that. There's three objectives on the board. Uh, face down, each objective is paired with a companion token in its own. Taking a companion token reveals the paired objective as well without additional experience. So you just get five experience for taking the companion, but not for the objective. The blue door cannot be opened until the blue objective has been revealed. And uh, you'll see why that might be important. If you look at this uh, picture I put up of the zombies in the big pit, you can see the blue door is right on the other side of them. And uh, we're going to we're gonna have to do those guys in before we can get to the folks that are barricaded. So that's going to be interesting. Now, they can't. those standard walker zombies cannot get out of the pit. It takes two moves, two actions. So only runners, the crows, and a couple of things can get out of the pit. Um, and then fire in the hole. Place 10 standard walkers in the hole in, Z, in the zone of Don't Tell of our 12R, which we have done. And then it says Arsenal, set the evil twins in Moss shotgun equipment. The cards in the marked zone face down. I have that there in a room by themselves. Any survivor searching this zone can take one of them at random instead of an equipment card. So I suppose when they're gone, you could search that room normally, but those are what's in the room first. And that is going to be our scenario. Now, some things to point out. You can see here, this is the two cards. I, don't, I already shuffled through them down random. I don't know which one's which. Uh, the Evil Twins and Moss Shotgun. And then up here, you can see the four uh, companions. Those are the, the parents of the kids that went on a, a run for, for stuff. And then there are also some other tokens around the board. Let's see if you can see. No, you can't. I'll refocus. Here on the board, you can see an objective token. And these are the companion tokens. We pick one up, we get to draw a random companion, and that one has been revealed. There's also one up here, and there's one in another building on the north side, right here, in the building with all of the walkers. So um, make sure this companion stays alive. We're probably going to have to bust in here in force uh, because the it says to not it says to spawn not spawn them in the zone with the guys way over here, but it doesn't say anything about the rest of the rooms. So I'm going to assume the rest of the rooms are going to spawn. I'm going to read that again and uh, see. It's going to take us a little bit to get there anyway. And you can see these guys are well protected. Now what else is a, a bother about this is that way over here, you barely see it in the, the camera view as it currently is, is a double spawn point. And the, the characters actually start in a spawn point. So it's going to be an interesting wild ride, but we are going to get to collect some companions. And I'm going to get the decks all shuffled up. And, you know, since this is an easy mission, I'm thinking it, well, I'll at least add the Zombivores and the Dog Companions in. Um, the Lost Zombivores. Now, they're, they're pretty tough. Uh, that could really make a challenge for us. But why not have fun with it and go crazy and kind of have, I wouldn't say everything in the kitchen sink because then we would be adding toxic walkers and all that good stuff. We're not going to do that, but uh, we will definitely add a bunch of new stuff in. So it'll be a lot of fun. All right, so let's get started, guys. I got the group divided into two, two groups. I got Wanda, Fred, and Adam in the first group. Uh, that's two folks, uh, and then somebody can open doors, and Kat, Tessa, and Julian in the second group. Uh, Kat can open doors. So what we're going to do is I'm going to back out because I want to show you what we need to do quickly to get a couple of the campaigns before any of them get revealed and killed. So when you pop open a door, the companions are immediately revealed along with zombies. So we don't want to risk... Uh, we need to open these doors at the same time, so we don't want to risk the um, zombies being able to uh, kill the companions. So our first group of Wanda, Fred, and Adam are going to, she's going to go one, two, remember she gets extra movement, and three, but she's going to stop there in that street zone. And then we're going to have Fred, who's going to go one, two, three, and then we're going to have, I'm sorry, that wasn't Fred, I've got to be careful of my figures, that's Adam, but he's going to do the same thing. Here's Fred, he's this cricket bat. Um, he's going one, two, and three to here. And then Adam, you can tell Adam apart. He is blue as well, but he's a lighter shade of blue. He's got the top hat on and the axe. So he's going one, two, and three. So they go there. And then our, for our second group, we are going to have them just go one step up to the door. So uh, Cat is going to step right there. They're going to go like that. And that's going to be the end of their turn. Now, we could run into some trouble with zombies pouring out from either side, but that's them's the breaks, right? So uh, we're going to have to deal with that, and let's get started with some zombie spawning, because that's basically the end of the character's first moves. We're going to start at the zone, right, uh, the one that the player's in, that's going to be our zone one that we'll always do. Now, if you're using the, um, the Season 3, you actually place these numbers around, you roll dice to see which ones spawn. 
Uh, so you could have double sp multiple spawns at multiple places, but in this case, we have one way down the board that will spawn as well. However, what we get here, and I'm just going to lay these out, is uh, oh, standard walkers on the stage. So we're going to get a uh, one of the VIP zombies to start off with there. And, and then we're going to move up to the uh, double spawn point. Okay, we're going to have two zombies spawn there. So we're, we're going to have uh, ooh, one bad seeker zombie. That could be bad. And hopefully this is not another... No, and all walkers get an extra action. Ouch! That's a bad... Well, i got to look. I don't remember if... I don't think the seeker walkers... The seeker zombies count. So I don't think... Uh, uh, those guys... i got to look in their rules. I don't think they're going to get the extra action, which is good. Then up at the north end of the board, we have a, another group of... Another seeker walker there. So I'm going to get those placed on the board, and we'll be right back. Okay, now, there's a little bit of a problem here. It's not going to hurt us immediately, but we're going to have to get rid of this guy fast. Is that uh, Hot Dog Man here, this is one of the very important people walkers. So, I don't know if you can see him. Well, there he is. Oh, fell on the ground. There he is. Okay, there he is, guys. This, this Hot Dog guy, he uh, does benefit from that extra activation. So, while the other two Seekers don't move yet, he is going to move up into the space with the players there. And that is going basically to be the end of the zombie turn. Um, it was pretty simple. Now, he doesn't get to attack, remember, because you attack first just to go over the zombie turn order, in case you haven't seen it. You, uh, that you attack, move, and then spawn. So since there was no zombies on the board to start with, except for the ones in the pit that can't get out, uh, we did, uh, we j all we did was jump to the spawn. But the reason this one got to move is, is walkers got, standard walkers got an extra activation, which made him move up into the space with the current, the first players. So I'm going to do one more turn, and then we're going to end it for this session. So let's get started with our next turn. Okay, so now moving the next player down, we're going to have to, we're going to start with Fred. So the, uh, the the first player marker's got to move down one. So Fred's going to go next. Now the problem with him is he only has a frying pan, so he's not very useful at this point in time. What he might do, you know, you can play a little trick where you he can take an action to swap an item, bash in the door, and then swap it back. I think that's what he's going to do. So he's going to take the handoff axe from from Adam, blast through the door, and then hand the axe back to Adam. So let's go see what that does. Since he's got three actions, that's what he's going to do. So he reaches back. Adam gives him the fire axe. He smashes the door. I'm not even going to bother to swap the cards out. You get the idea. Then he's going to hand the axe back to Adam. So we're going to pop that door open. At least that allows Adam all three of his actions in case there's lots of zombies in that room. And then, of course, we have to spawn a zombie in there. So let's get the... Uh, we're going to have to spawn this whole section now. So I'm going to place this the zombie deck right there. You can see the entire section. So we're going to start spawning zombies. I'm going to spawn one in here. Oh, it looks like two regular walkers. Remember, we're in the blue zone at the bottom. Two regular walkers. Not so bad so far. One regular walker. Um, all runners get an extra activation, so there's nobody in here with that guy. And then one, extra, one regular walker. So I need a bunch of regular walkers. And I'll get those and come right back. That's not all. We also have to reveal the companion tokens. So I'm going to take the, the spawn deck off the board. That's the, right there. We're going to put this back away for a moment. I'm going to take out the, um, the companion deck. And I'm going to shuffle it up and see what we get there. Hopefully some really good companions. Okay, let's see what we get. At the top one we get a handyman. And at the bottom one we get a gunman. Okay, so let me get them out. Okay, those have been revealed, and that is going to mark the end of Fred's turn. So now we're going to go to Adam. Now Adam basically has his axe back in hand, all at the use of Fred's items. So he's going to do what he does best. He's going to step into this room here and start some melee action. Remember, he gets two dice. He's got a fire axe. Fire axe is a uh, zero range. A weapon. It does one die. Of course, with Adam, it will do two. It needs a four to hit and does two points of damage. Now, remember, uh, those we can kill. Uh, well, anyway, we need a couple of hits, and he's got two more actions left to do it in. So, hopefully, he will get that together. Okay, let's roll and see what happens. Uh, he got a hit. So, so on his first hit, he does kill one of the walkers, which I've taken off the board, which will give him his first point of experience. It's going to move this up here. It's being difficult. There we go. So he's got one point of experience. And then he's going to roll again to see if he can kill that other walker before the uh, all the 
uh, before the zombies get a chance to do anything. And he hit, rolled a three and a two, so he failed. He missed in his second attack, and those were all three of his actions. So hopefully there's going to be some frying pans getting some stuff going on, or we're going to have a problem. Okay, so next up, after Adam, we are actually going to be moving down to the other team. Now be Cat's turn. Oh, but before we do that, I do want to say that I had to put a noise token on the door that we opened up north with the fire axe because it is loud. Not that that's going to matter. Most of the zombies, except for one, can see the group at this point. Uh, but we are here, so the first thing that we're going to have to do, I th unfortunately, is because um, she can't move. Well, we know that there's no zombie in with this guy. So the first thing she's going to do is attack this zombie here with the crowbar. She gets one die, she needs a four better, and it does one point of damage. Which is all it takes to kill a single zombie anyway. She rolled a three in her first action, so she missed. Her second action, she rolled a five and killed it. So she uh, did kill Hot Dog Man. Now, she keeps that hot dog man on her card for now. Uh, and if she manages to get a set, uh, then she can uh, cash it in. If she cashes it in sooner to put it back in the pool so that they don't get extra spawns, then she can do that as well. But if that was her second action, so she gains a single experience point as well. And then for her final action, wait, wait, what are these? Oh, these are the companion cards. We can get rid of those. Okay. For her final action, she is going to pop open this door with the crowbar. So she is here and that is with her three actions. Okay, next up we got uh, Tessa. She is right here. She's going to step in and I believe she's going to take the spawn point and the handyman companion. Wait, this is the gunman. The gunman companion. What does he do? Let's see. Before she picks him up, let's take a look at him. Now this takes up an inventory slot but it can be in the back and doesn't uh, take up uh, her active slots. It says active, spend one action for a pistol ranged action with all uh, teammate gunmen in the zone. So if she gets more than one gunman, she can do that multiple times with one action. Passive, get one plus die, one die sorry, plus one die ranged. So this will go back here in her the back of her uh, items. And also means that she gets to pick up, oh, right off the bat we got the blue objective. So we can open the blue door up. We'll put that on her and that gives her, she doesn't get ten experience points, but she does get five. So that is going to put her right there, up in the yellow, up close to the yellow zone. That was her second action. So, um, no, wait, wait, wait. She moved, first action, second action was to collect the items. So for her third action, she's actually going to search the room. Here is the mega item deck. Look at that. <laughs> kind of crazy. Okay, let's see what she searches and gets. She gets a, ooh, a crossbow. And her gunman just gave her plus one die range, so that's pretty awesome. It's got a zero to one range, so it, can, it can't go very far, but it gets one dice, does three plus, and does two damage. So that will go in her other slot right here. You know, I'm going to put this guy over here so I remember. I know he takes up a slot, but I don't want to miss his abilities, because now she gets plus one range die when using this awesome crossbow. But that was her third action, so that's all she's going to get to do. Good news, however, is that uh, next up is Julian. Now, Julian, he's going to step in. You know, she had an extra move action, but I don't see, uh, or not her, but um, she had an extra move action. I could have moved her into the room. That probably would have been a good idea after she opened that door. I think she's going to end up there just to play it safe and keep everybody together. Keep in mind that this guy is now with Tessa, and he goes in there, and he's got two actions. He won't be able to use them both. Well, take it back. He steps in. He can shoot. I think he'll shoot this one, get it done. So he's got a pistol. It's ranged uh, Zero to one, uh, it does one die. Down, uh, rolls one die and does hit on a four plus. I like these brown dies; they look good. They're very clear. Let's see if he can hit, hit it. Uh, he did. He got a. That's a six. So he uh, he killed a zombie, which is coming from right here. So that zombie is dead. I'm going to put it in my growing pool of zombies on the side of the board. He gets an experience points point for that, so he is now at one. And. We're going to put a noise token right there. Okay, that is going to end his turn. So last but not least now, we still have Wanda to go. She's up in the streets up above. She is going to come into here. Remember, she can move too, but she's just moving in there right now. And uh, she's going to take a swipe at the zombie here and see if we can get him killed. Okay, so for her second action, she's swinging at the zombie. She rolls a five with her frying pan, which is just enough. Uh, take it back. Frying pans require a six. So she uh, failed to hit with the frying pan. She's going to roll again. 
and she rolled a one. So we have a real problem. Um, you know what we should have done with uh, Julian is shoot up <laughs> all the way across there. He's got line of sight, but we didn't. So we're going to take a point of damage the next turn with one of the, uh, with either Fred or Adam. Uh, I'm sorry, with either Wanda or Adam. That's not good for us. So, um, well, that's the end of the, the player's turns, and she could not kill him with the frying pan, which is a bad thing, because I was hoping to get some searches done before we had to exit that room. And we're already going to take a wound. Wow. And she'll drop her frying pan. Just disastrous, right? Or whoever gets hit. It's obviously going to be Wanda, because we can't lose the fire axe. Well, guys, this would have been an incredibly short game if I allowed this to happen. And I think if a group of people are sitting around a table, someone would have realized we would have had to... I almost forgot that he was here, this zombie way up here. So I'm going to put him back in this back room down here and say that Julian, <coughs> with his steady hand ability, shot that one before Wanda got in. So we're going to kind of take that back. She moved in, and then she had two actions. So for one action, she's going to collect the objective, which is going to be... Because if any of the these guys die, we lose. So we would have lost that moment because... Uh, uh, I think that the, the, if they only can take one damage, I don't know if I can give that damage. I gotta look this up. So there's some new nuances with these companions. Like I don't know if I can give um, if I get to choose who the damage goes to. If I do, then I'll take that back and do it the way we planned it. Um, but I don't want the game to end in the first turn. So you know, under the rules of the companions, says is a survivor belongs to the leader. His team is defeated and removed by the first one it receives. Okay, so I guess. We don't have to give him that wound, so I'll take that back. It, we did it the way we did it. I'm not going to change it. And uh, what will happen, though, is that we're going to have to give a wound to somebody right now because it is now the attack uh, turn of these zombies, and he's the only one that can attack. So we're going to do exactly what we said. We're going to take a wound card. The zombie bats the frying pan out of Wanda's hand. It is discarded. The first of the items cards to be discarded, I believe, so I have to find a discard spot for it. And then she takes a wound so, good thing she can move a lot, because that's going to help her in the long run. So, that wasn't a great start for us, was it? But now we get to, so we did that, now we're going to get to do moves. So we do have this uh, Seeker moving into that space. Now, that's all he does. Hopefully, we don't, if we draw another Seeker card, though, he'll get another activation, and then Fred will get a wound and lose his frying pan as well. Down here, we have this dippity doo who's gonna, just going to move right there. And that's going to be it. Now, we got to do some spawning. Man, that's not it. we got all kinds of stuff to do. So, this one is close to these guys, so he's going to move into here. These two will split. One will move here, and one will move here. We've got a lot of stuff going on next turn. I hope we can get through it. Lots of zombies in the zones. Okay, and then now we're going to go move on to our spawns. There's a bit of a rough spot there. Wow, right off the bat. huh? Okay, right here we're going to have one walker. Up here we'll have a uh, lost zombivore. Oh my gosh, that's really rough. Just one, thankfully. I think you only ever get one. And also, coming along with that, is a Seeker. So that's a problem, and I'll tell you why. So remember that the Seeker's ability, if we draw another Seeker card, Seekers get to activate again. So this Seeker does, in fact, attack Fred. That means he takes a wound and drops his frying pan. So he is now weaponless and has a zombie in his zone. And then down here, we have this one move up as well. That's not all, though, because we're going to spawn one up here. You know, I've been looking at to see because there's so many symbols on these. Now I gotta be careful and see, make sure I don't get a manhole cover. I gotta watch that. Um, if I did, I missed it. Uh, okay, we're just gonna have one more walker up in here. Well, while we're here, I'll just put him out. There he is. So he's done. Okay, so he, this is the only one worth talking about. The other two just we spawned one normal walker, but this has a seeker and a lost zombivore here, which you can see right there. And the reason I put this die next to him is that's going to mark his health. He can take five hits before he goes down, and he gets one activation like a regular zombie, so he's not fast, but he's very dangerous. Um, and, uh, man, we're really in a world of hurt at this point, aren't we? Okay, well, heck, let's uh, continue on. I mean, Fred might become a zombivore faster than we thought would happen. But that's going to end our turn for today, uh, in our session for today, so I hope you enjoy this. Uh, this is, there's a lot to manage here, so if you see me making a couple mistakes, I, I think I did pretty good on that. I'll catch them during editing if I did, I hope. And I'm just glancing through the cards, these zombie cards. I did not so far get a manhole cover. Okay, good. So out of the spawns that already happened. That's not too bad. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at right now. That's a pretty rough spot for us. Uh, we got a lot going on, and uh, there is already some hard action with the... Uh, 
Zombivore, lost Zombivore coming out and a couple of Seekers getting extra activations. Really tough. I think it's going to be harder than we think, especially since I added this extra stuff in. Uh, but we will see. So, again, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.